We had to pull them out. In position, we're supposed to be our neighbors, there were already enemy forces. We found out about this during our maneuver. The first time they tried to do it fast, they didn't succeed, because we were going for the assault by a very small number of people, I mean minimum number of people to storm this village. Our group should have been twice as large. The decision was made to use M113 as fire cover and as fast delivery of personnel to the kid group. We took the vehicle, took a couple of volunteers and decided to make a daring maneuver, to fly in and yank them out. Due to the fact that we did not understand their position, we moved to another street. Next came the problem of communication. The first platoon reported its location at one point, I started from that, and that was the basis for the other percentage platoon. In fact, they were at a completely different point. We started to make contact, we didn't expect that enemies are so close to us. We made a maneuver, we drove back one street. Enemy soldier with grenade launcher has run out. Enemy's infantry was about 30 meters away. We had a hatch open and the guys jumped out so brazenly, neutralized a fighter with an RPG. These orcs run away hiding behind a metal fence. This was not a very good defense, the guys neutralized them as well. We moved a bit more and passing the intersection another RPG guy shooted us. A shell flew by, we said. Well, lucky us. The boys pressed them with fire. We've made another maneuver. We moved out of there. We realized Kid's platoon is not there he reported he was. It is. The decision was made for the second deeper attempt. And we've tried for the second time to get through to our guys. They were already surrounded. A fierce battle has begun. We have discovered ourselves a take. We began to fight back. We were slowly rolling back, back to our positions. We retreated. There was another attempt to assemble a group, to break through with infantry, because we already knew more or less where enemy forces are, what buildings they have occupied, as it was possible to pass. But on the other flank there were also reinforcements, enemy reserves, and they pushed us back. We had contacts with enemies from multiple directions and those who have come from the right flank. They basically cut us off from our guys, so breakthrough to them was unreal. Heavy enemy fire. We were shooting back. Before that we found their machine gun crew. They came in, they didn't see us. They started to shoot towards the side where, probably, they thought we were. Our guys also brazenly ran in and neutralized them. Then fire density increased. Is he coming this way? I'm shell-shocked. Go, go, go! Get up! Guys! Bro! Where are you going? Put the tourniquet on your arm. On the leg, maybe? On the arm, quick! Above. Then I made the difficult decision to order them to pull back, rather than to push onto the group from the first platoon. This is my responsibility, that is my decision. It's controversial, I'm still arguing with myself whether I made the right decision. It was decided to pull back the second platoon, align the line of defense with the second unit to make it solid, and then make some decisions, to be able to at least defend ourselves. Meanwhile, the enemies were successfully pulling up reserves from Zaitsev, and their number already much exceeded ours. 
I made the decision to withdraw my unit from the position. Plus I agreed with the battalion commander, my friend Rolo, that the second company would also go out. We got them out from the village, started to evacuate. They also went back fighting. After the evacuation of all those people who were able to get out, I gave my command vehicle to the soldiers. I moved to the battalion commander's vehicle. And we started to plan all together, with the headquarters, how to pull out those guys who were surrounded. A high-density fire, anti-tank weapons, large-caliber machine guns. Our guys were pulled down, without giving them a chance to get out. But since the enemy didn't really understand what was happening there, the enemy did not perform a sweep at night, but was preparing to the defense and the second attempt of our assault. So the enemy, judging by their negotiations, from radio intercepts, from what they did was preparing to defend from our assault. Their commanders ordered to forget about wounded, to mine the area around their positions, to organize the fire points around the area. The defense was their aim at that moment. We took up defensive positions around 10 a.m. and stayed like that till 5 p.m. There was no other option. I said to the commander that I'm going to take the group out at night. We couldn't get out during the day. We were in touch with them. The situation was a tough one. They were all in one house. They were surrounded by enemies, enemies shoot them and throw grenades, but we simply didn't have enough people to get them out. This is the story, there were no tanks, there was nothing. We took defense in a private house and enemies tried to smoke us out. They set the house on fire. We realized that we had to get out. There were only a few ways out. It's either through the window or through the door. You can't get out, but it's easier at night than during the day. Then it got dark. Our house was successfully set on fire, because we were sitting there for a very long time. They couldn't pull us out of there. Their grenades were flying through the windows, and they were shooting at the house with an RPG, and they realized that we were sitting in a tight spot. Then they decided to set the house on fire. Then the decision was made. We were driving around the village, near the cemetery with Rollo, with Shapa, with everyone else, and figuring out how to get them out. I left to the most unrestrained crew another RM-113, so that in case of emergency they had opportunity to evacuate the boys. And there have been carpet bombings around, there was all kinds of bomb stuff in there, we just keep moving, so that we can't be targeted. We didn't really have a solution. That was my second hardest decision. Either I gather the remaining 15 soldiers and go with them to storm the village again. And lose them as well. Or invent an alternative plan. It was an extremely difficult decision. It was a very difficult decision to make. I approved it, that we will come up with another plan. We all decided that they are now sitting up until nightfall. When it gets dark, we create a fire corridor with artillery. The artillery is starting to fire actively, creating a certain corridor for them and they begin to exit under that cover. They were divided into groups of two to three people. There were still enemy patrols in the area, so our guys started to move through this fire corridor fighting them. By the time the plan was ready it was dark. The guys turned off the radio stations. We were confident that some of the radio stations were lost. We were sure that enemies are listening to us. So the guys decided on their own to disable their radios. We've lost the contact. So we could not explain them the plan. 
It was already getting dark. Our tank did its job. Tank fired into the enemy's house across the street. The house caught fire. The ammo started to explode, and the enemies scattered to other buildings. We had about an hour to just take a break. We still couldn't get out, but there was time to rest, because the intensity of the fire was a little less. Thank God I had my thermal imager with me. I walked around the house. There were three rooms in the house. I went to the farthest room and saw no enemies there. I thought, cool, in 15 minutes I looked again, removed the glass from the windowsill and was the first to jump into the window to look at, is there an enemy further on? I went out the window and looked, I sat for 10 minutes, listened, thought. I looked through the thermal imager again, and there was no one, well, cool, let's go. I slowly start to get the group out, together with the wounded, with everybody. What is the advantage? We called first tank fire, that's the most suitable thing that was nearby, and the tanks were shooting near the house, where they were, and they got into the room with enemies, which caught fire, and the enemies ran away, and it made it possible to exit through this house. Next we start moving. That was a small village. There were central roads with intersections, but we had to move around the gardens. Once when we crossed the road, a group of three enemies came around the corner. Thank God, they didn't notice us, we were sitting quietly. Full moon, all light, were clearly visible. But they passed by in 20 meters. I realized that we can't use roads. We immediately shifted to the gardens and went on through them. At the end of the village, about a hundred meters to the exit, we've met an enemy patrol. Another battle started. And at the sound of gunfire, all the other enemies scattered. We were lucky to have such a stupid enemies. One of my guys, the cat, he closed the group. The enemy shines a flashlight on him and asks, and who are you? And so it began. We are very lucky that they did not open fire immediately. The enemy received a machine gun burst back. They were everywhere. Meanwhile, it just happened, that kid has contacted us by phone, explained the situation, we realized that they were already on their way out. We started to implement our plan for artillery, that worked. Then, according to kid, enemies gathered a lot more people and artillery. And enemies have suffered unreal loses, because, according to Kid and his guys, enemies were already in every house of the village. The artillery did a great job. Three artillery teams shoot everything they had. Enemies evacuated their dead and wounded for three days. They didn't have enough transport to move them. A very large number of their soldiers entered the village, and our artillery destroyed them. In small groups, little by little, we were moving away from the village. In small groups of two to three people, Kozak and I were the first to leave. Our commander took us away. He was riding around the forests with a walkie-talkie trying to contact us. My phone is ringing, I pull up my phone, and it's the kid calling. I couldn't believe my eyes, I picked up the phone. He says we're here. We're up with Kozak. Kozak was severely wounded, but he's walking, it's okay. We came out, he said, evacuate us. I'm already approaching by car. At that moment, as I remember now, I stop and tell him to cross the river. This crossing was under enemy fire. And at this moment, kid is crossing the river, and the ferry gets hit by a missile. The crossing explodes, the bridge is folding, and kid and Kozak are walking away safely. They say, well, at least we were not on the crossing. These were the first two men who had been evacuated. I'm glad, I'm happy. While I was taking Kid out, I found out what was going on there, what circumstances. And I decided to go back. Kid came with me. 
And then, about three hours later, maybe even four, our neighbors told us by the radio that our men are out, and they went around evacuating them. Out of 13, 11 came out. The meerkat received a gunshot wound. We were in Zaporizhia. He came to us as a young soldier. He completed the young fighter's course, and then he came to our unit. Meerkat was a doctor, was a medical officer in the unit. He received several gunshot wounds. He realized that wounds are very heavy, leading to death. Can't even put a tourniquet on himself. And, unfortunately, with the intensity of the fire that was coming at us, no one could provide him the first aid. We kept stretching further, we're leaving the village. The meerkat has been dragged a bit, and he speaks. I am very heavy, leave me alone. He asked for a grenade. The guys were moving away from meerkat, 20 to 30 meters away. We could hear enemy shouts, don't shoot, and how the grenade exploded. He blew himself up. He helped the boys out. They said that he blew himself up with a grenade. I'm being contacted by my neighbors. A few more our people are moving to their positions. Again, I'm happy and shocked that the guys are coming out. As it turned out later, I asked, how did you know where to go? You were already disoriented. Well, we looked at the direction from where our artillery works and decided to go towards the artillery. And they have reached the positions of our neighbors. Some of the people were taken away. This is Beaver and Porthos. They came to the neighbors at night in position, have come out of the line. The neighbors rejoiced. It's the infantry that we're missing. Get in position. You'll be on guard. They were still standing there until the morning. It was time to evacuate the guys. Armored vehicle has arrived. Our guys were at the top of it. This vehicle was hit by an anti-tank missile. Inside the vehicle there were dead, but ours stayed alive on top. I'm thinking, oh, shit, guys came out of the encirclement, there was still fighting at night on the positions, and eventually got hit with a missile. In general, everything was okay. They got up and shook themselves off, swore and moved on. The new transport has arrived. They said they will get there on foot. No need for a second vehicle. Then they got into the car of my friend Skiff. He is the commander of the 8th unit. Special respect to them. His guys greatly helped our guys. Separate real respect and gratitude to Skiff. The boys are tigers. I say without a doubt. Short contact with the enemy. No fear, no pity. In close combat, directly breaking into the position of the enemy, literally flying in on the spot, landed already in enemy territory. And the fulfillment of all of the tasks assigned, despite the complexity and requirements, 